this next part of the tutorial, we're going to create a new class to hold the physics engine. We're going to call this class the Pong Game Engine. In here, we're going to keep the state of the game, and we're going to put in here all the stuff for collision detection and how the sprites are going to react. Let's define the state variables we're going to need in this class. Pong Game Engine needs to understand how big the screen is that it's working with. The Game Engine will also contain the ball and the paddle. And we've set aside this special constant called paddle speed. That's going to determine how much the paddle is going to move to the left or to the right each time the Q or the W button is pressed. Now once again let's build a constructor. To this constructor, we're going to add a little bit more custom code where we're going to create the ball and the paddle and initialize all their values. We're going to initialize the ball to some safe arbitrary location on the screen. These two numbers here define the initial trajectory of the ball. These define its size. Here is the speed factor and here is the paint coloring we're going to use for the ball. Likewise with the paddle, we're going to locate it right in the center of the screen. The reason we're not going to put it at the bottom of the screen is that we need to reserve some space for the keyboard. The trajectory of the paddle is zero because we're not going to have it move on its own. It's going to be 10 units high and 90 pixels wide. The paddle speed, as we've mentioned before, is going to determine how much the paddle is going to move each time we press the Q or the W button in our game. Whereas with the ball, we went out of our way to create some red paint. With the paddle, we're just going to use an anonymous paint object and have it default to black. Now we've finished our constructor. Now let's code the utility functions for this class. This is the main draw method for the game engine. Every time it's called, it paints the entire background of the canvas white and then draws the ball and the paddle in their current positions onto the screen. 
the update method is called in order to make the ball move autonomously and also to invoke the physics engine which detects all the collisions. Let's go through the physics engine now and see how the collisions are detected. In this first piece of code we're trying to figure out if the ball has gone below the paddle which means that the user has lost and we need to create a new ball. Here we're trying to figure out if the ball has gotten to the top of the screen and needs to be bounced downward. Here we're trying to figure out if the ball has hit either the left wall or the right wall and needs to be bounced. And finally if the ball makes a collision with the paddle we want it to bounce upwards. We need to code one last utility function for this class. If somewhere else in the game we detect that the keyboard has been pressed we need to inform this class so that it can move the paddle to the left or to the right. That concludes the coding of the Pong game engine.